Thanks to the Yahoo Mail app for sponsoring today's video. I'm kind of embarrassed to admit this, but all of my life, I've been thinking about productivity all wrong. I always assumed the definition simply meant doing something useful with your time. And in turn, the goal must be to try and trick your brain into working and being productive as often as possible. And then the other day, I decided to search the definition of productivity, and it states it is the effectiveness of your production measured by the input versus your output. And that's when I realized I have been doing life all wrong. I don't need to strive to work 10 hours in a day. I just need to be as efficient as possible. You know, we're going into a new year and the older I get, the more I think about how precious time is getting as my life is flying by and I don't want to work all day every day. So in today's video, we're gonna go over some simple tips that I've implemented to maximize my input versus output that I think could really help you too. The first thing I need to do and maybe you need to do too to get productive is tackle areas where you are disorganized. For me, that is my text and my email. Yes, I am that scary person that has 23,000 unread emails. Something has got to change and I have to tell you I found the perfect tool. I have a couple of different email addresses because I lead a couple of different lives. I've got my personal life where I communicate with my friends that I see on a daily basis, YouTube life where I'm communicating with you guys, brands, PR people, and then I've got my real estate life where I'm communicating with clients, other real estate agents, escrow companies, lenders, all of these requirements require different emails and one thing I always found really unproductive was bouncing back and forth between these different emails. And you probably have this too. Maybe you have a personal email, a company email, and they're all kind of disjointed. Well, I found a way to make them all really cohesive. The Yahoo Mail app, they just came out with a brand new interface. So I wanna show you guys, it has so many amazing features that really is completely maximizing how I spend my time when it comes to emails. So the first thing you're gonna do is create a Yahoo account if you don't have one. And the next thing you're gonna do is sync up all of your email addresses. That is the beauty of this. I've got a couple Gmail accounts. I have an Outlook account. I'm able to sync these all up. And then what you're gonna see is they're just beautifully all right next to each other. And it's so easy to flip through. You can also change the colors. I changed my real estate one to black, YouTube one to blue. One of my favorite things, they have this feature called one tap unsubscribe. It really makes it the easiest way to unsubscribe to those pesky subscription emails. I one tap unsubscribed hundreds of different companies that just collected over the years, cleaned up my email, and this made it really, really easy to do that. The next feature that I really love is receipts, and it'll show your purchase history so I don't need another app to even track my finances. You're also gonna see right next to it, there's packages. So it syncs up any package tracking emails that you have. I even had a package actually delivered today and the first thing that comes up on my interface, like right up there is your package has been delivered. I can also swipe through and it's showing that I have a package that is arriving today. It's also showing me that I have a bill due. It even shows me how much I owe and I can quickly quick to pay my bill. Then you're gonna see on the left hand side you have different views you can hit documents and it's pulling up any different document this has been so helpful for me before I was constantly having to go through my inbox and search for an old email to refer back to a document and it's just made it easier than ever to quickly find those documents refer back to them get them when I need them and the travel tab is very convenient as well it immediately syncs up any travel that you have so you'll see I actually have a flight coming up. Switching to Yahoo Mail has 1000% made me so much more productive. My emails take less time to get to. I'm more organized without even trying to be organized. It just organizes for me. I think it's one of the best tools that you could use this year to get really productive. So I'm going to have a link below. You can download the app, sync it all up. I'm Yahoo. I'm not looking back. I love it so much, you guys. I truly believe this will help you be productive and save you so much time. I'm obsessed with it. All right, now it's time to get some real work done. You know where you shouldn't go. 
the office. Studies have shown in the eight hour workday, people that go to the office are only productive for like three hours of it. I'm not saying this is everyone, but I find this to be true for myself too. When I do go into the office, it's fun and I enjoy it, but I walk out at the end of the day feeling like I got barely anything done. And it's because we're all really susceptible to these top three things that make people work less. Number one, it was found that on average an hour and five minutes was what people were spending on news websites just reading. Number two, 44 minutes was used on checking social media and I bet for a lot of you it's way more than that. And number three, discussing non-related work activities with coworkers took 40 minutes. When I want to get good heads down work done and be ultra productive, I stay home. And I also put myself in my own little airplane is what I call it. This was inspired by literally every time I go on an airplane, I get so much amazing work done. What I started doing on days where I feel like I'm getting really distracted, I turn my Wi-Fi off and I literally put my phone in airplane mode and I put it down and then I do my work. I've always resented getting ready in the morning. It's the same every day. It's mundane. I'm not learning something new. From shower to getting my hair done, everything, it takes two hours. So one thing I started doing about a year ago to feel more productive during this time is I actually, I have this awesome little tripod phone case and I set it up and I just watch YouTube videos. As a YouTuber, I find it important to consume other content. It really is necessary for me at least. I need to see, you know, what's trending, what's working, what people like. But if I'm simply like sitting down on my computer watching YouTube videos, it feels super unproductive. So being able to do it while getting ready in the morning has made me not hate getting ready as much because I do feel like I'm layering something on top of it, being a little more productive. I'll also do this with my breakfast, listening to a podcast while cooking taking hands-free phone calls while driving, and responding to emails while eating. I intentionally like to layer tasks with things I don't really care to do. I also intentionally don't layer tasks with things that I enjoy, such as walking my dog. I like to be 100% mindful and present in these moments, and it's okay to not be productive, 100% of your day, it's important to have time to recharge too. But with the things you don't even like that much, you might as well layer on some sort of task. Okay, this one is so easy, it's almost too obvious, but I don't know anyone else that does it. So when you are folding your clothes, rather than just putting them away with no real rhyme or reason, just build your outfits while you're doing that. So on a hanger, I will put pants, shirt, and a jacket all together. If I don't do this, I will pull out like five different shirts while I'm getting ready and then I won't have time to put them away and then my room's a mess and then it's so much more effort than it needs to be. So doing this just saves me so much time, stress, and mess. When making a to-do list, it just overwhelms me and reminds me of so many things that I need to do. It's not for me. I don't use to-do lists. I also don't like planning every single second of my day every day because if one part doesn't go according to plan, I feel like I've lost my day and I'm not in control. So those are two things that I don't do. But I will say, taking a page out of this productivity planner that I have, I love these two questions, writing them down every day. My intention for the day and my number one most important task for the day. That way, I have some sort of intrinsic goal as to why I'm doing my task and I have my number one focus in mind all day. That's what really works for me and I just absolutely love this. Next, I don't know who needs to hear this, but I know there's someone out there. Just because it doesn't take as long does not mean it isn't as good and effective. I don't know why in my head, I always feel like the longer something takes, the better it is, and it's just simply not true at all. So again, with getting ready, it takes me a full hour to wash, dry, and curl my hair. It takes me two minutes to put it in a ponytail, and honestly, they both look good. I have started really embracing ponytails. That is like the maximum output for your input. Throwing on a little bit of jewelry instantly makes you look so much more put together and like fancy. And it's so extremely easy. Just because it didn't take long doesn't mean that it's not good. Everyone's productivity journey is very personal and it's going to look different. So the first thing that you should do is make a pie chart. I think a visual representation of how you spend your time can be very interesting. You can just Google pie chart generator 
You're gonna wanna come up with some values that you spend your time doing. Here's some examples that I did. And then I just had all of the values add up to 24, as in 24 hours in a day. So one means one hour. And here's how my pie chart looks. Sleeping is where I spend the most amount of my time. You should be striving for this to be around an eight because eight hours of sleep is pretty optimal for us humans. I have 10 hours here because I'm factoring in, I have a really tough time sleeping at night. It takes me a really long time to get to sleep. I try to not be too hard on myself because sleep is super important and to just be hard on myself about it is gonna cause like sleep anxiety and then it makes it even harder. The rest of my life though, we can change. I spend about seven hours out of the day working. Commuting is very little maybe 30 minutes. When I wake up, I, I need an hour to myself to just not do anything. It takes me two hours to get ready. I'd factor about an hour for personal chores and then two and a half hours for fun slash entertainment. The key takeaways for me was I definitely was super surprised by the large chunk. Almost, almost half of my time is spent like trying to figure out how to sleep. Maybe I should go to a doctor and really get that figured out. In my head, I always felt like commuting somewhere and getting ready were like my biggest bottlenecks and my biggest things that take a lot of time in the day, but it's actually not that bad. Then I made a pie chart of how I spend my time working as a social media slash YouTuber person. I spend a lot of time planning and writing out videos, brainstorming ideas. I don't spend that much time filming. Filming doesn't actually ever take that long. It's just the planning that takes a while. I spend a small chunk on emails and the majority of my time is spent on editing. I have a large list of things that I want to accomplish in my life and this year one thing I learned is with how I spend my time working I'm not able to even scratch the surface of all of the things that I want to do. So something's got to change. For me the thing I'm challenging myself to do this year it sounds so easy but it's so hard for me to let go of this control. I am going to let other people edit my videos. It's my biggest time suck and it's like the actual one thing I don't need to to be a part of, so why don't I just let it go? So, I've got some footage here. I'm gonna submit it. I'll, I'll have to give you guys an update in the future of how I feel about it, but I think it feels good. I need to let it go. So that is one thing that I challenge you and myself to just try and do, outsource, one thing in your life. Again, this is gonna look very different for everyone. Maybe it's something as simple as just having your groceries ordered and delivered. That $7 fee saves you like an hour and a half of your time that you could take back as personal time in your life. I think that could be worth it. So those are all my tips and tricks that I'm implementing, but I wanna leave you with one last thing to think about. It's the biggest thing that stuck with me this year that someone told me that it's so easy to overestimate how much you'll get done in a day and underestimate how much you do in a year. I 100% do this and I think it's one of the biggest causes of failure in your productivity is just not setting the right expectations with yourself. So don't be too hard on yourself day to day and hopefully right now you're proud of yourself reflecting on how much you've accomplished this year. Thank you guys so much for watching and thanks again to Yahoo Mail app for sponsoring today's video. Seriously go download it. I love it so much and I'll see you guys later. Bye.